we we often hear that Ivy League, and I think we automatically think that it entails, you know, certain schools that are, you know, just really well known for their academics. Um, and sometimes I think we add in Stanford and MIT um, and a few others in there. Well, really, what the Ivy League is actually, um, it is actually um, a former, or it is a athletic league. So in 1954, the NCAA. Um, which is our athletic organization here for colleges in the US, they actually put a group together, a group of seven schools, uh, Cornell wasn't yet involved, um, to form the Ivy League so they could play sports <laughs> against one another. Um, but the Ivy League has come to, as we mentioned, mean something quite different today and is synonymous with really um, challenging colleges to get into, some of the best that we have here in the US. Let's actually move to the next slide and I'll tell you just a little bit about them. Um, so every one of these schools is pretty different, actually. What you'll see is that every Ivy League requires some pretty high academic requirements, right? Most of the students who are applying are going to have high SAT or ACT scores. They're going to have they're going to have as well um, high GPAs. Um, so it's really important to actually so it's really important to actually um, think about what else you know you're looking for out of your college experience. You know, each of these colleges are incredibly different. Um, Brown is much more flexible. Um, students can study, you know, kind of form their own major. They can study what they like. They can even um, not get actual grades. They can just do pass fail. Um, you know, Penn has a school of nursing. It's the only nursing school in the Ivy League, and many other things. Right. So it's really important to know why your why your students are applying to these schools and really what makes it unique and special for them. Um, so incredible institutions could talk about them for hours, especially Harvard. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about the admissions process because I know that's what a lot of y'all are really curious about. So, you know, what exactly is it that we are looking for? You know, as admissions officers, what are we looking for when we are looking at students' applications? Um, and it's not just academics. Um, we look for students with intellectual curiosity, um, students who have pursued academic achievement um, and academic excellence, um, but we look for students with strong personal and extracurricular accomplishments and really strong personal qualities, students who are going to provide diverse perspectives inside and outside of the classroom. Um, Ivy League institutions, other highly selective institutions, they are residential campuses, so students are living on campus all four years, so it is incredibly important that we are admitting students who are going to be academic, academically excellent, but also be active outside of the classroom and be wonderful roommates, wonderful lab partners um, as well. So let's talk a bit more about how that how that looks. So in the US, we tend to use an application called the common application. Um, and when we are looking at a student's and when we are looking at a student's application, we are actually required, you know, we are looking at almost four years of experience. We are looking at the student's entire high school experience. So we want to see all of their grades from 9th, 10th, 11th, and up to 12th grade where they are currently are when they're applying. We wanna see what classes they've taken. We wanna see all the extracurriculars that they've been a part of, their activities. We wanna know any academic awards they've won. We also require that they write a personal statement. Um, so it was to allow us to really get to know them. This is not an essay where students will talk about what they wanna study. This is an essay that is 100% about who that student is as a person. Um, as I mentioned, we are building a community of students. So we don't just wanna know what they like academically. We actually really want to get to know who they are. Um, we will also, many of the colleges will require supplemental essays. Um, and a lot of these tend to be more of those kind of traditional questions. What do you want to study and why? Why do you want to attend our institution? 
Um, we also require, in order to get to know the student a little bit better, we also require two academic teacher recommendation letters, someone that they've had in high school, someone who knows them well, as well as a counselor or school administrator. They will also write for the student. So there is a lot that goes into filling out this application. We are evaluating three, three and a half, four years of high school experience, and we are trying to get to know the student as a whole person. Next slide, please. All right. I often get this question of how is the application weighted, right? You're mentioning academics, you're mentioning extracurriculars and these essays. How is it really weighted? What is the formula? for getting in. Um, so there is no formula for getting in, which I know is very frustrating to hear. Um, but the admissions process is very holistic. Um, we look at, like I said, we look at the whole student. Um, so we are looking at academics, extracurriculars, personal qualities. Um, I will say that academics, you know, are what get a student's foot in the door, right? So they have a little more weight probably than any everything else. Um, because if a student can't do the work, then they're not going to be a great fit for the university, right? So academics, we might say have a tiny bit more weight just because a student has to have it. Um, but the majority of students in the application process, um, like if we look at Harvard, for example, the majority of applicants to Harvard maybe 85% of them are academically qualified. Um, so we really are able to look at everything else a student has done, their extracurriculars, their leadership, their personal qualities, and we really get to evaluate those. So we are looking at the whole student. Every part of the, of the application is incredibly important, but for the kind of the sake of, I guess, kind of simplicity and having something to look to, this might be kind of a rough estimate of what, you know, how the application might be weighted. And that is to say that everything a student submits is important. Next slide, please. All right, so we, so as I mentioned, we are looking at the whole student. We are taking a holistic approach. So we are looking at what we call the three pillars, the academics, the extracurriculars, and those personal qualities. Um, so with academics, you know, we are looking at test scores, at the courses the student has chosen to take, their grades in those courses. Um, you know, what we hope we also learn in addition to the numbers they're submitting is that they love to learn, right? That they're excited about learning, that they have something that they nerd out about, that they geek out about, that they really enjoy studying, that they really enjoy exploring. We're hoping to admit students who are not only strong, academic students, but who in really enjoy it and love it. Um, you know, we look at extracurricular extracurriculars and leadership because we are, as I mentioned, community residential communities. Um, many of these colleges, these top colleges have over, what is it, four or five hundred extracurricular organizations on campuses on their campuses. Some of them are pre-professional, some of them are in the arts, some of them are in STEM, some of them are athletics. It really, really ranges, but we do expect all of our students to be active outside of the classroom. So we look to see what the student has been able to achieve. We look for their record of achievement within their own extracurriculars in high school when we are considering um, their applications. And then, of course, we really want to admit students who are going to share their unique perspectives that who are going to add to the kind of the fabric of the community, who are going to speak up in class to share their unique perspectives, be a good roommate, as I mentioned. Um, so we look to those essays. We might have an interview, many colleges have an interview process where students will meet with an alum an alumnus of the university where they get to, you know, talk about why they're interested in the college um, and also ask questions of this, you know, this alumnus who graduated from the institution. Um, we are, and then here we, again, we are also looking at recommendation letters. We want to get a sense of the student in and outside of the classroom. We want to get to know who the student is. All right, so let's jump to the next slide, please. All right, when we're looking at academics, as I mentioned, we are looking to see, you know, we want to see what the student has taken. So we're looking at that transcript because we want to make sure that you have taken a challenging curriculum and that you've done well. Um, we are always looking at the context of where you are coming from. So if you're, if you are, you know, take at a national high school, that's totally fine, right? We want to see that you're taking whatever the most challenging classes are at that high school. If they are completely regimented, that's okay. Um, 
if you have the option of taking advanced classes, honors classes, advanced placement, AP classes, IB classes, the A levels, we hope that you will do those as well. If you are applying to these highly selective top universities, that will be the expectation if that's available to you, right? So take challenging classes, do well with them. You know, if you if you don't quite have the opportunity to take something that you're interested in, maybe you really want to explore psychology, there are opportunities to explore that topic outside of school, right? You can do an online course. Crimson has the Crimson Academy where you can actually sign up for AP classes and even get help to study for um, those AP exams. So there are lots of opportunities to kind of go above and beyond um, in terms of what courses you take, even if your school might be a little more limited in what they offer. Um, we are also trying to get to know you, like I said. So any context you can provide um, at any point in the application is super helpful. So, you know, we might notice that you maybe, you know, had a lapse or maybe didn't do well, you know, one semester in a class, maybe. And, you know, we want to know why. So there is space in the application to tell us if something was going on, right? Maybe you were moving, maybe it was a tough time at home, uh, maybe COVID was particularly rough, right? So there is space in the application to explain if something was happening, right? If you don't tell us, then we can't take it into consideration. Um, and of course, we are going to look at standardized testing. Um, I know many colleges have been, or almost all colleges have been test optional for the last couple of years due to COVID. Um, but now that we are kind of opening up a bit more and you have the opportunity to take the SAT or the ACT, I highly recommend that you do. Um, MIT, for example, actually requires that you take one or the other um, if you want to be able to apply starting this year. So um, do plan on taking it. Um, take whatever makes the most sense for you. Um, I tell students that you definitely do not need, you don't need perfect scores, right? As you saw on maybe on that second slide that I shared, that we can see the range, right? Like the range, the top 75th percentile on the SAT, I think was like 1560, 1540 at some of the schools. So as long as you are scoring within the range, you're going, you know, that is what they're looking for. They're not looking for anything to be perfect. If you get a 1590, you don't have to retake it to get that perfect 1600. You know, take it a couple of times if you can, study for it. Um, but submitting scores is just another metric that you can send to the admissions office so that they can feel good about you being able to handle the academic workload. Um, they will also look at any AP scores, any predicted IB scores, predicted A levels, you know, any other exams that you submit, they will also look to those. Uh, next slide. You know, and as I mentioned, the majority of students applying to these colleges, probably 85% of the students applying to these Ivy League institutions are academically qualified. So they've taken a competitive schedule, they have strong grades, they have strong test scores. So that's basically what gets your foot in the door, right? You've been, you've been a great student, awesome. What else? What else makes you compelling? Um, so the next thing we're gonna talk about are your extracurriculars and why they matter. All right, so in order to get into a top institution, you really do need to be doing things outside of the classroom, okay? This is how you are spending your time. These are things that are important to you. It can tell us a lot about what you care about. So we hope that you will be involved in a, you know, in a few things. Um, you, it's really about the, uh, the quality and not the quantity of activities that you are doing. Um, and we hope that you are involved in activities from the start of high school, right? We don't want you just to kind of add them on when you're applying to college, but we want you to get involved as early as you can. All right, we want you to explore in ninth and 10th grade. We want you to try several things, figure out what you care about, and then start to build on the activities that you like. Start to take on leadership roles. Start to think about how you can maybe leave an organization better than how you found it. Maybe you want to start your own thing. Maybe you want to develop an app. Maybe you have a lot of home responsibilities and you help out with siblings, with grandparents. These are all extracurriculars. So we just want to know how is it you're spending your time outside of the classroom and how might we expect you to, you know, be on our campuses? What might you get involved with once you are on our campuses? So let's go to the next slide and talk a little bit about like how we, you know, kind of how we might look at leadership, right? So 
in your activities, we might see that you are a leader in an organization. This can be part of your school. This can be part of your community. Um, this could be part, you know, you could be doing community service. You could be helping your family, as I mentioned. You could have a job, be doing research, doing an athletic activity, playing instruments. It really, the list goes on. Like, what are you doing when you're not in school or eating or sleeping? How are you spending your time? Um, so there, you know, traditional leadership, you know, often looks like, you being the head of an organization, right? Being a school club president. Um, maybe you are a part of some type of like youth council, you know, maybe for the town, the city you live in. That's something, you know, that's great. That definitely demonstrates leadership. Um, and maybe you are really good at your activities, right? And so your accomplishments in an activity are also kind of demonstrating that high achievement that we are looking for. So that could be winning um, debate competitions. That could be, you know, being a top delegate at model UN conferences. Um, so leadership and achievement, you know, are, are, you know, one way to definitely show us that you're getting involved, that you are, you know, really, you know, taking your activities seriously. Um, but there's always like kind of non, I guess, kind of more non-traditional kind of leadership where maybe you don't have a title, right? So maybe you weren't elected or maybe you didn't win something, but you are taking initiative, we want our students to see that there is a gap, right, that needs to be filled, that they saw an opportunity, so they took it. Um, so that could be a student started a tutoring club that maybe started off, you know, helping 10 students and then grew to help 100 students. Um, you know, maybe you saw that your community really needs, there's a community, community near you that really needs children's books. And so you start a library, you know, a mobile library for some kids in your neighborhood. Uh, maybe you're really active on social media and you want to use your social media presence to talk about a cause that you care about. Maybe you want to build an app. Maybe you are starting your own business. There are so many things that you can do. Um, and what's important is that you, you know, stick to a few things that you really dig in, that you try to have as much impact and leadership as possible. There is no correct list of activities. There is no ideal list. We really want you to do th things that you care about. We really want you to get as involved, you know, as you can um, and do the things you enjoy, do the things you want to explore because then you'll go above and beyond. Then you'll do more than just kind of the bare minimum. You'll do more than just participate. All right, next slide, please. Um, and here is something I want to say, yes, this was from the Harvard Admissions Office. This is what they had to say about extracurriculars. All right, so contributions students make to the well-being of their secondary schools, communities, and families are, are of great interest to us. So indicate for us the time you spend and the nature of the contribution to extracurricular activities, the local community, work experiences, and help provided to your family. Activities you undertake need not be exotic, but rather might show a commitment to excellence regardless of the activity. Such a commitment can apply to any activity in your life and may reflect underlying, underlying character and personal values. All right, so what the activity is, is it important? It's how you get involved, how you commit to it, how you show us that this is something you care about, okay? So what you do is completely up to you. Um, don't feel like you have to do certain activities. Don't feel like we have to see that you are a well-rounded student. Don't feel like you have to only do activities that are related to maybe your future major, maybe what you wanna study. Um, the U.S. is not like the U.K., right? We don't have, um, we don't only want to look at your co-curriculars. We want to look at your extracurriculars. So your activities do not have to be related to what you want to study. Maybe some of them are. Uh, maybe you have many interests, though, which we often find that most students do. You might be interested in an art, in a community service, in a STEM activity, in debate. That's great. We just want to see that you are committing to what you are a part of and that you are, like I said, leaving those organizations better than when you initially found them. All right, next slide, please. And I know that this can be really vague, what I'm saying, and I know that it can be challenging to say, okay, well, you know, maybe my school does only has like one extracurricular, 
right? And there's only so many students that can participate in, in it. Maybe I don't have access to any extracurriculars with my high school, or I'm not really interested in many of them. So that can be really hard to know where to start. So I suggest that you all uh, take a look at the Crimson, um, if you can take a look at the Crimson Education page, um, they have a YouTube page where they go through several students, um, extracurricular profiles. And these students are going to talk about, you know, when they got involved, how they got involved, you know, what they're doing, why they're doing it, um, and how they're really growing the activities that they're a part of. So you might say, okay, well, I know how to participate in something, um, but I don't know how to make it better, right? I don't know how to do something that's maybe innovative. And if you need, and if you need some advice, like this can be a really great place to start. And then part of Crimson's, you know, part of the Crimson experience is that you can get extracurricular coaches to help you figure out, okay, what do I get involved with? You know, are there projects I can work on that are going to really show how interested I interested. I am in this, you know, certain topic in this cause and this experience, and they can really help guide you through this. Right, next slide, please. All right, so extracurriculars, right? We just as a kind of a final note on those, we really do expect you to have at least a couple that you're really involved with. Um, so you, if you're like, oh, I only do one thing, that's okay. Um, we just expect your level of accomplishments, your level of involvement, if you only do one activity to be really high. Um, we remember you are applying to the most competitive colleges um, in the country, possibly some of them in the world. And so we want, so we are often seeing students who might, you know, might be Olympians, right? Like that might be their, they do one activity and they do it really well. They might be recruited debaters. Um, they might, you know, have a very successful company, um, you know, so they're doing one thing at a time. That's not the majority of our students though. That's not the majority of the applicants. Most students do a few things and they do them at a higher level. So they, you know, have leadership. They're taking it beyond their high school. They might have you know, city, regional, state, uh, national recognition for some of the things that they're involved with. So you just have to know that we expect a lot from our students. And so checking out um, what, you know, what some of the students we've worked with at Crimson have done can be a really good place to start, to start getting some ideas. All right. Um, so let's talk a bit more now about the personal, kind of the personal statements. And would you go back just one slide? Sorry about that. Oh, so when I mentioned, you know, I mentioned personal qualities, right? So we want to admit students who are great. We want to admit students who are kind. We want to admit, admit students who are going to add to our communities. Um, and we really want to admit students who know who they are, at least who know who they are in that moment. Um, and the way that we get to know you and the way that we get to know this is through that personal statement. So in addition to those recommendation letters and possibly that interview, this is the primary way that we are going to hear your voice in the application. This is where we are going to learn additional information about you that we're not going to find anywhere else. So what makes you you? Um, so this is challenging, right? Because we are telling you to be introspective. We are telling you to write in a style that you're probably not used to because really no one is used to writing like this. This is kind of like a cross between a, a journal or a diary entry and a paper, right? So like how, you know, how do you approach this? Well, there are, you know, there are prompts, right? The common application does give you prompts for these personal statements. Um, so that is always a good place to start to read through them and say, do any of these really resonate with me? Do what, you know, if I answer, you know, if I want to answer one of these over something else, is that going to really help the admissions officers get to, you know, know me better? And is it going to provide information that they're not going to find elsewhere in the application? So that means, you know, if I decide to write about how, you know, it was really challenging for me in a certain class and I worked really hard and I got my grades up, is that going to add anything that the transcript doesn't tell them? Is that going to add anything that a teacher's recommendation is going to tell them? I'll say, you know, probably not, right? So we really want you to highlight on what makes you you outside of the classroom. So we want this to be something, we want the content to be something that's personally meaningful 
to you. We'd love to learn about your traits and your characteristics. It could be your, you know, about your ingenuity, your creativity, um, how resourceful you are, what a problem solver you are, your maturity, your confidence. It could be a number of things. I always tell students to think about, you know, to really think about who they are and say, all right, if I had to describe myself in, in five characteristics, how would I do that? You know, what are those five words that I would use to describe me? And I'd say, oh, well, you know, I'm curious. Um, I'm silly sometimes. I'm empathetic. Uh, I'm loyal. And I'm, you know, adventurous, right? If those were my characteristics, then I would then want to brainstorm different times in my life where I've really exhibited those characteristics and think about experiences that have been meaningful to me and things that I would really want to share with the admissions officers. That's another way to kind of approach it. Um, there is no perfect topic. There is no perfect way to write this. It really is about you letting your personality shine, you being self, uh, being introspective, um, and you figuring out what are the takeaways, what are the qualities that you want to get across, and being specific, really sharing personal anecdotes, really sharing, you know, doing things that play up your strengths, um, you know, and, be, and writing in a way that is comfortable for you. Um, so, you know, your person, if your personality has a sense of, you know, you can, if your personality, you really value your sense of humor, then you can be slightly humorous in this essay. Um, if you're more lighthearted, it could be more lighthearted. If you're deeply intellectual, it could be deeply intellectual, right? Um, it can definitely be about growth in your life. Um, we love to see that. Um, it can definitely be about experiences that have shaped you, um, you know, maybe something that really inspired you and, you know, helped you take action, you know, helped you do something. Um, so there are those prompts there, but always think about what, you know, what you want us to learn about you and make sure that you are filling this essay full of personal anecdotes, personal experiences, so that you are showing us that you are something, right? You're showing us that you have this characteristic. You're not just telling us that you are, you know, I'm, I'm very curious, right? You're giving me examples so that I can, you know, I can see that you are a very curious person based off the examples that you have shared with me. Um, what shouldn't you write in your personal statement? Um, you don't want to repeat anything, right? So I don't want a list of your achievements. I don't want a list of your extracurriculars. I don't just want to know about your academics. You know, I don't want you to talk about other people in your essay. Like this is about primarily about other people. You can, of course, talk about other people, but I want to know about you, right? I want to know about things I can't find anywhere else. Um, you don't want to get too personal. It's, it's not actually a diary entry, you know, so you don't want to talk, talk about maybe romantic relationships. You don't want to talk about anything illegal or unethical. Um, you don't need to use any unnecessary or vulgar language, um, but you also don't need to use any like ornate language. You don't need, definitely don't use a thesaurus, right? You want this to be in your voice and not feel forced. Um, and yeah, and you don't want to write about something that you think we want to hear about. You know, don't pick an essay that's like, oh, I want to talk about, um, you know, something I've overcome. If you can't really think of an example, that essay topic is not for you, right? You have so many choices. You can literally write about anything in this essay as long as we are getting to know you. So pick, you know, pick the characteristics you want to highlight, pick the experiences you want to highlight, and then go from there. Right, next slide, please. All right. And these are very, these are three examples of very different essay openings um, of students we've worked with here at Crimson. Um, and they got into a number of highly selective institutions. And so I'll just kind of, I'll just read through them and just let you know, just so that you can see, get a sampling of how different these essays can start, how different these essay topics can be. All right, so this first one, um, the apron dropped to my knees. I was emblazoned with the hi, my name is Jamie sticker, coupled with a scarlet employee and training hat. The fresh, not frozen, grilled, not fried motto resonated in my mind. It was July, 2011. I had taken the plunge and secured my very first part-time job. I was flipping burgers and I was excited. Okay, all right. So probably gonna learn about, you know, the student's first job, why they were so excited. Probably gonna learn about, you know, a lot of lessons they got out of this. All right, so I'm sure there's some really great personal details in there. On this next one, we have, 
I am a creature of peculiar habit. I am indifferent to black cats, falling mirrors, and Friday the 13th, but I do have one superstition, one cosmic fault that tastes like no other. Hmm, interesting. This, what this student did here was totally grab my attention because I don't actually know what their superstition is. I've never read their essay before, but I am intrigued. And so they have grabbed my attention and they are talking about some peculiar habit and they're really gonna give me some insight into some part of them that I would never have learned about anywhere else in the application. Great. And then with this last one, it is Friday evening and the stage is set with the glorified podium of discussion in the middle of the living room. First on the docket is weekly fast fact. At the sound of my gavel, my grandfather declares, if you are ever in need of a quick repair, there's only one item for every job, duct tape. Duct tape fixes everything, or so I was told. Um, and this is an example of a student, you know, of what a student does with his family and kind of this like fun, you know, this, you know, fun habit, this fun tradition they have of, you know, talking about the events of the week, right? And this, they're giving us insight into their personal life, into something that's just interesting, something that's made them who they are. So, you know, no, there is no perfect topic, no perfect subject. It's just really, truly about getting to know you. It's about making sure that it's, of course, easy to read, that it's grammatically sound, that it's college level writing. But the topic itself can really span a number of different areas. Next slide, please. All right, um, and just a couple of general admissions tips to be aware of. You know, you do want to be resourceful and think outside of the box, um, pursue opportunities beyond your school. Um, if, you know, as I mentioned, if you are interested in psychology, but your school doesn't have it, there are opportunities to take psychology classes, to read psychology books, um, to, you know, join, you know, some type of online community. You know, there are many things you can do both for extracurriculars and academics outside of your school, whether in person or virtually. Um, make sure that we are getting a sense of your intellectual curiosity and your impact in your application. Um, make sure you ask yourself, like, when you are, you know, deciding what activities to be a part of or are, you know, thinking about, you know, taking it to the next step, like, make sure you ask yourself, like, how can I have impact? Um, I tell students to be a well, to be well lopsided for the most part, well lopsided, um, or no, well lopsided or well rounded, actually, one or the other. Um, it's okay to be well lopsided and to know that you like STEM, to know that you're really interested in, in going into that field. Um, but if you do that, then it's also important to make sure that you're kind of involving yourself in all areas of STEM or in different areas of STEM. So maybe you're part of the Olympiad, you do, you know, science Olympiad, but you also, you know, tutor um, other students that need help. Maybe you also do some research, you know, so that you're doing STEM, but you're doing it in different ways. Or be a well-rounded student who has an art and has a science and um, has an, ath you know, athletic activity right? Do things that you really enjoy. Um, when you are applying to colleges, make sure you do your research on the schools that you're applying to. Um, while I know that the Ivies have these huge names, once you start to really dig in and do your research, you're going to find that not every Ivy is the perfect fit for you, right? Some are going to be better than others. So make sure you add other schools to your list that might be even better for you. Because if you can really thrive at a college and really stand out, like that's probably going to be better for you than, you know, just having a name and not really being able to kind of, you know, rise to the top when you're there. Um, definitely invest your time in exploring different careers and majors, um, you know, earlier on so that you can have a better sense of what you might want to go to into in the future. Um, and then some things to avoid or red flags. Um, don't do things, don't just do things because your friends and peers are doing them. Um, you know, do things you, like I said, that are interesting to you that you enjoy. Um, don't you know, sacrifice your passions to fit into the mold, meaning again, don't just do things because your friends and peers are doing it. Do things that you care about because when you care about an activity, when you care about the subjects you're studying, um, you will do more and you will be able to write about them with so much more passion and authenticity um, in your application. Um, and make sure you give yourself enough time to build your application, especially, you know, when it comes to this introspection you need to be doing um, to figure out, you know, who you are and what you like. Okay, next slide, please. All right, and then just quickly, kind of an overall application timeline, you know, as I mentioned, we are, you are applying, or we are looking at an application that's like all of high school, 
right? So it's really important as you start high school to make sure you are finding your academic and extracurricular strengths, that you're getting the hang of what high school is like, you're getting, you know, you're participating in class, getting to know your teachers, um, that you're really building your extracurricular profile, you're figuring out what you enjoy, um, and then starting to take on leadership roles as you, you know, get up there in grades. Um, eventually, you know, after your first year or two, you'll start to practice or take and or take the SAT or ACT. Um, you're going to start taking on leadership roles within your activities um, and start to research your colleges earlier on, um, really making sure they fit your needs, your whole, all of your needs, not just your kind of academic needs, but also your social and extracurricular needs. Um, and then, of course, from there, there's a big process in your senior year of working on essays working on supplemental essays, figuring out when to apply and, and so on. And you know, go ahead and pass it back. Thank you so much, Devery. Um, very informative and helpful. 那接下来呢,我会跟大家分享一些学生的成功案例,然后最后我们把Q&A留到待会儿的环节,然后Devery会给大家一一的来解答您的问题。那比如说我们这位学生 Kristen, 他就是在ACT和SAT都取得了非常高的分数,也在12年级之前修了13门AP。那可能有的学校没有提供那么多的AP。那我们Crimson uh, Global Academy 是我们网上的高中可以给大家提供更多AP的选择 还有running都是非常优秀的,非常全面的。那他也应该在他的文书当中有非常清楚的知道为什么他会觉得普林斯顿对于他来说是一个最好的fit。这一点也是很重要的。那如果大家很感兴趣Crimson其他的学生的一些
了一百多万美金给到 Crimson 的学子来作为他们的一个奖学金。那在二零二一年呢，我们有呃从 CRI 进入牛剑的学生，牛津剑桥有一百六十八位，和嗯和 Top Ten 的美国的排名前十的。大学一共有168名学生，嗯，所以这些都是 Crimson 可以提供给大家的资源。像这个 Young Pioneers， 嗯 ，CYP 就是呃，我们会按照联合国的实际项可持续发展的指标，为大家设计课程和项目，然后给大家在国际舞台上发生的机会，分享自己的研究的项目的成果，这样有助于学生呃增加他们这个个人履历的一些亮点。好，我们的 Crimson App 就是每个学生进来之后，我们的策略顾问、课外活动老师、呃、uh, ，tutors 和学生还有家长，他们都在这个 App 上，所以 everybody is on the same page 来制定目标、制定计划，然后一一看怎么执行，执行到了哪步。嗯、呃，上面还有一个 feature 是你可以看到你离你所申想申请的这个学校，呃，有多远的。一个一个距离，然后你有哪些具体的工作需要做才能达到你的目标啊、呃？以及一些其他的免费的资源，嗯，和成功的案例，嗯，都可以在这个 App 上和大家分享。好，那在马上我们就要进入 Q&A 的环节。那如果嗯，您对像 d e v e r y 这样的策略顾问的咨询感兴趣的话，请扫二维码和我们免费预约这样一个一对一的免费的咨询。嗯、um, ，好，那你可以扫这一个二维码来进入我们呃的群，我们的讲座群，也可以在群里我们会给大家发免费咨询的一个讯息，也可以和我们的同事来约账免费咨询。OK， so without further ado， we're gonna jump in Q and A， 呃、uh, ，问答环节。So， 呃，呃 ，Devery， I will read the questions。Um, and yeah, so and then I'll give the time to you、uh, to answer those, please. Thank you. Perfect. The first question is: My son is swimming and spend two and a half hour a day and six days a week. Does the admission officer consider this as extracurricular? Absolutely, of course. Sports are, you know, are definitely an extracurricular.、Um, I think. I would say though, when it is a sport that could be played at the university, so like you know, swimming or basketball or、um, diving or a number of other sports,、um, they are going to want to know, you know, what the they are going to hope that the student can either swim for one of their teams or also has other activities as well. If they aren't quite at the level to swim at, you know, at their school, so it can be one. Of his activities,、um, if he, you know, is doing other things as well, but if, or if he's a super talented swimmer and could swim at the school, then he could possibly be, be recruited. But either way, it is definitely considered an extra, you know, it is considered an extracurricular. Okay, thank you. All right, next one. If my SAT is around the fifty percentile of the university, should I submit it or not? I wouldn't say it's always going to depend, honestly, on the school.、Um, but typically, as long as you're in the top half, in the top fiftieth percentile, I say that it is. It's more than fine and probably a good idea to submit. Got it. Okay. Are there any difference between online AP classes and in-person AP classes? Will the result have the same effect in application? I suppose if you know if you're going to take the AP exam,、um, it that I think matters less. Right, especially if your high school doesn't offer AP courses. So if you're taking an online course because your high school doesn't have it, and you take the exam and do well on it, that's just showing that you can take initiative and do well. Right?、Um, if your school has it, if your school has them and you don't take them at school, you only take them online. I don't know, and don't take the test. Maybe you're doing it because it's easier if you do it online. So you know, it really depends. But as long as you are, you know, challenging yourself, that's really what they're looking for. Yeah, especially when your school doesn't offer、uh, offer some APs,、mm -hmm. uh, doesn't offer some AP classes online. That would be very helpful. All、exactly. right, thank you. Next one.、Um, I requested an honor class, but it was canceled by my high school. So I ended up taking a regular class, which didn't help with boosting my way GPA. Shall I explain this situation in the additional information section, or it would be pretty like too detailed in AO's eyes? <laughs> Um, so you actually 
So like I said, yeah, you have that additional section to say, oh, a, a class was canceled. So I, I signed up for honors, but the class was canceled. So I took regular and that's it, right? You wouldn't say, therefore, that's why my weighted GPA is lower. You would just say, you know, here's some context for academics. Like I signed up for AP Psych. I signed up for this course, but we didn't have enough students. So it wasn't offered. Got it. Okay. Uh, next one, when applying to college, what is the rule of uh, thumb of choosing the major and alternative a major in Common App? Um, depends on what you want to study. That's that's really what it is. Um, you want to choose something that you're interested in. You also want to make sure, and it's not just about the Common App, it's about the college you're applying to. So some colleges, you know, really want you to apply to a specific school. So it could be the School of Engineering, the School of Arts and Sciences. Um, that way they know what school to place you in. So that's going to take a little more thought than a college that's like, you'll choose, you'll pick your major after your first year, you have lots of time to change your mind. And all of our majors are equally, you know, you can get do any major you want, right, as long as you meet the require the prerequisites. So, you know, we don't have it, we don't have a limited number of spaces. So it's really going to depend from college to college and, you know, what their process is like, but you should choose something that makes sense, right? You should choose something that you enjoy um, when you're when you're picking, but there, there can definitely be some more strategy around that, but that's a very kind of individual basis. Right. Thank you. I built some small apps and games. How can I highlight them in the application besides listing them as one of the activities? So let's see. So, I mean, that will definitely be one of the activities. You can listen the additional information section. Typically, it's like interesting to see if, you know, you, how many downloads you've gotten, especially if it's been pretty popular, if you've been able to iterate it over, iterate on it over time, or maybe you're learning, you know, additional languages, additional tools to build it. Um, I think if you especially are maybe wanting to go into computer science, this is a great, great way to show that you are very interested in the topic and you're doing work outside of the classroom. Um, so it might be something you talk about in what you want to study and why. It can definitely go in the additional info section and the activity section. It really just it, it depends. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Would you suggest a narrative or creative writing for supplemental essays or just the straightforward way? Um, so for supplemental essays, you for su mostly for supplemental essays, it is a bit more straightforward, right? It's like the more creative or more personal tends to be in that personal statement, where, whereas supplementals are a little more to the point, but you are still, you know, sharing your own experiences. You're still giving them background, right? But they, you know, if you, but if you have a limited number of words to use and it really is just like tell me about some leadership or tell me about what you want to study then you do need to make sure you get to the point and that you are giving them you know you're actually telling them you're answering the question um and not just you know trying to build a story right so you need to make sure you answer the question um it is fine for most of your supplements to be a bit more straightforward okay great um, on the application application component breakdown slide, yeah, I remember that also. So this is a yeah. quick question. There was a we mentioned ten slots to rank or five. What does that mean? So on the common application itself, you know, like as I said, we're looking at you know your activities, you're looking at your awards all throughout high school. So you will have on the common application ten spots to list your activities. You don't have to use all of them. Um, if you know for your activities, but you have up to 10, you know, spaces to talk about the different activities you've been a part of, and you have up to five spaces to talk about any academic awards you have. And when it comes to the activities, you want to put them in the order of importance to you, right? So if you dedicate most of your time to swimming, then swimming should probably be one of the top, you know, the first or second activity you list. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, does prepare school lunch for siblings count to ask extracurricular activities? Um, possibly. I mean, I would think it's more of like, I help, you know, I help out or my parents work a lot. So I, yeah, I make lunch. I do the grocery shopping. I prepare snack when we get home. I check their homework, right? So it can be like a number of things that you do, you do for your sibling. Um, we're not going to consider like just regular chores, like, I have to make my bed or, you know, I sometimes have to wash the dishes once a week as like, as like family responsibilities. But, you know, if it does start to add up and kind of takes away from your own time, then yeah, that's something we can, we can consider. 
Okay, perfect. I will pass the final or senior level of my figure skating in my freshman year. If I quit skating after that, will it affect my resume? Will it seem like an inconsistent extracurricular? So I will say that, you know, you kind of have to decide, like, how are you going to spend your time after that? So are you continuing to skate? And this can go for anything, right? So this could be, I got my black belt in Taekwondo. I could, you know, I've gotten my Eagle Scout and Boy Scouts, right? You've reached the top level of something and now what? So you can, I'm sure you can keep going in some respect, right? Like maybe you're competing, maybe you're teaching, um, you know, you're still skating. It doesn't matter that you don't, can't continue to achieve awards, but you can still be contributing. Um, or if you decide, okay, I'm done, I've done it, I like it, I'm not going to be a professional skater, I'm not going to skate in college, and I want to spend that time doing something else, then start doing something else. I imagine that's pretty time consuming. So if you're like, okay, it's been great, I want to do something different, that's okay too. But you need to then you but you have to use that time for something else. It can't just be okay, I'm done, right? You've got to like shift and start doing something else. Yeah. Okay. Uh, will taking four years of school band be the same as being in a symphony outside of school? Which one would be the best choice? Um, I mean, yeah, being in any band would be great, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think sometimes if you can be in like a honors band or a regional band or, you know, the sometimes I have students that are actually in the professional symphony or the student run city symphony like you're showing us that there are different levels of achievement different levels yeah of accomplishment right so either is great right do the one you know do what you can do the one that makes the most sense for you um pick, yeah pick the one pick the one that makes the most sense right okay so we'll pick this question would it be okay if i don't self-report one ap test score of three as the rest of my ap test scores are five or four Absolutely. APs are completely self-reported. So if you do not need to submit threes, sometimes you can submit threes. Depends on the college. Again, that's more of kind of a strategy conversation, but it is totally fine not to report a three. Definitely okay. don't report any twos or ones. <laughs> <laughs> I tutor around 20 students. Does that count as leadership or just a volunteer job? Um, it kind of depends on how the admissions officer wants to view it, right? So if you tutor 20 students, that's great. Um, you know, maybe think about how you can recruit more tutors, how you might recruit more students, how you maybe you'll make, you know, you can put some of the tutoring you do online and not just in person so it can reach more people. You know, so it really kind of depends on what you do with it, but that's awesome. You know, keep it up and, you know, see what, see what, how you can help it, see how you can make it grow. Great. Okay, so next one. I am a little bit behind um, math compared to my schoolmates who want to apply for CS major. Um, I only take AP Calc BC in my senior year, whereas my peers already finished it in junior year. Would you suggest taking an online AP Calc course in summer before senior year or take it at my high school's senior year? Uh -huh. Taking AP Calc BC by your senior year is great. That's ideal. Um, you're fine there. I think what you, if you're interested in CS, maybe take an, maybe actually take another CS course over the summer, learn another language, learn another skill, code something, right? I think that actually demonstrates your desire to be in CS more than trying to, you know, rush through this important math class instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take the last question. My son plays piano pretty well. Um, how we should highlight that in application? Yeah, so it's really going to depend, right? So are you, is your son competing? Um, is he, does he do like the, I think there are like international music competitions. Um, is he playing for himself? Um, does he, you know, play in a group? Does he play as part of the school musicals pit orchestra? Is he composing his own music? Like it can really vary. Sometimes some of those like more individual activities are hard to really highlight and so that's something you want to think about pretty early right like how could he share you know share this with others maybe he can play his music at events he can volunteer to play you know for nonprofits. you know when they're doing fundraising you know there are things that you can do to take your talents and you know to help others so you've kind of got to get you've got to get creative with it great all right. Thank you so much, Devery. So awesome. and it was great time, great hour, and we really learned a lot from you. Really appreciate it.
Um, yeah, so thank you everybody. Um, 谢谢大家的参与。那我们今天的讲座就到这里。嗯、uh, ，欢迎大家截图扫码入群，然后和我们预约免费的咨询。好，我们下次见。See you next time. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.